you want to run a game from the system prompt, then you're going to have to pass user input. For example, if the player enters take sword, your program needs to divide that string into two smaller strings, one for each word, take and sword, and then work out if the first word is a known verb, that is a word that defines an action such as take or drop, while the second one needs to be a noun, that is the name of some object in your game. I'm Hugh and this is Code with Hugh. This is another lesson in my adventure game programming course. At a simple level, it is actually pretty easy to pass user input. Initially, let's assume your game recognises a vocabulary of just two verbs, take and drop, and three objects called sword, ring and snake. You want to allow the user to enter commands to take or drop any of the three possible objects, but you also want to disallow any other commands. For now, I'm not talking about actually implementing the taking and dropping of objects. I'm just talking about allowing those commands to be entered so that the game can make sense of them. If you're a reasonably experienced c -sharp or Java programmer, you might want to stop this video now and see if you can figure out some way of doing that. This is my c -sharp code. I'll show you the Java version shortly. Everything starts in the main loop. It reads the string entered by the user at each turn through the loop. That's this string input. This loop continues running until the user enters Q to quit. On each turn through the loop, I pass the input string to the run command method. So what does that do? Well, here it is. First of all, it tidies up the input string by trimming any blank spaces from the start and end and converting everything to lowercase so if the user enters words in capitals, my code will still work. If the string wasn't Q to quit, then the rest of the code runs. If the user just pressed the enter key so the string is empty, the method returns this error message. Otherwise, it executes this code which splits the string into a list of smaller strings. The split function uses this array of characters to work out where to split the string. These characters are delimiters. They mark the start and end of individual words. Here I pass out a word whenever a space or a full stop is found in the input string. Then my code passes this list of words to the pass command method. Let's see what that does. First I define two lists. One containing commands, that is the verbs, the others containing objects, that is the nouns. If the user enters more than two words, the method returns an error message. Otherwise, it assigns the first word that was entered, that is at index 0, to the verb, and the second word, that is at index 1, to the noun. It then simply uses the contains function to uh, check if the verb is found in the list of commands and the noun is in my list of objects. And the contains function is just a standard .NET method of the list class. So you can see that this parsing routine is really, really simple. I have no ambitions here to do complicated grammatical analysis or natural language processing. I just want to be able to identify the sorts of simple commands that game players are likely to enter. Later on, I'll add routines to deal with more complicated commands, such as put the small golden ring into the big wooden box. But I promise you that even though the commands will get more and more complicated, the essential approach to passing out words really doesn't change all that much from what you see in this simple program. So let's try this out. Let me try entering some commands. Take ring. OK, it makes sense of that. Uh, drop sword. So these are combinations of verbs and uh, and object names and nouns. But how about if I enter something that doesn't make any sense? Sword drop. So this is the noun and the verb in the wrong order. And it tries to categorize sword as a, a verb and it fails. And similarly, drop is not a noun, so that's not allowed. And I can try other variation. So even though it recognizes the, if I type it correctly, it will recognize the vocabulary. Um, 
drop ring sword, it's not going to allow this command because my code only allows two word commands in its present form. So even though this is really simple at the moment, this user input, this parsing routine can already distinguish between sensible, meaningful commands and commands that don't make much sense. Now let's look briefly at the Java code. This is the Java equivalent. This is broadly the same as my C-sharp code. You can see it starts off with a main function and it reads in some code and that calls run command, a very similar code to the C-sharp code. I've had to write one extra routine, that's this one up here called word list. And what this does is it splits the input string using a regular expression to define a set of delimiter characters. But apart from that, the code, here you are, the pass command method, the code in my Java uh, program is very, very similar to the code in my C-sharp program. Up to now, I've shown you all the examples in both Java and C-sharp. That's to help you understand how to translate code from one language to another. But as the code base gets bigger and more complicated, I think we need to concentrate on just one language. As I explained at the start of this course, I've decided to make the default language C sharp. That's the language I'll be concentrating on from here on in. That doesn't mean that Java programmers won't be able to follow this course. As I hope I've shown, Java and C Sharp are in many ways very similar languages. If you're a moderately experienced programmer, you really shouldn't have too much trouble taking my C Sharp code and translating it into Java. The coding techniques I show will work in both C Sharp and Java. Sometimes details of the syntax and of course the classes you need to use will be a bit different. But fundamentally, if you know Java, you shouldn't have any problems in understanding my C-sharp code. In fact, you can also use the ideas I explain, the coding techniques, the game structure and the class hierarchy to write games using other object-oriented languages too. Anything from Object Pascal to Python or Ruby. If you need a bit more help in developing games in Java, remember that I've written a whole book all about that subject. So that's where you'll find all the nitty gritty details. Thanks for watching. Now be sure to subscribe to the Code With You channel and click the bell to get an email whenever I upload new lessons.